Well, we have a lot to talk about today on the show. We're on Watson Watch, all the implications of where he lands and a bunch of other moves. It's a fun time for fantasy football. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy today's episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Thursday, March 17th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, Jay Grace. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Jay Grizz ecstatic. At the uh, holiday or yes. just another chance to, no, to shine? No, it's, it's little known fact about the cardboard bear extraordinaire. His uh, lineage? His lin yes, his okay. great-great-grandfather from Ireland. Really? Yes. Didn't know that. Didn't know Ireland was filled with uh, bears. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> it's <laughs> They shoo him over to a corner oh, wow. of the island, mm. but bears everywhere. Wow. Yeah. In, in the highlands? Yes. Okay. Somewhere. Um. Well, another Go, another lesson. Don't look it up. Just accept <laughs> Ireland <laughs> swarming with bears. You learned that one on social media, <laughs> I'm guessing. They uh, they swam here. Oh. <laughs> bears, very strong swimmers. Buoyant. Buoyant <laughs> bears. Welcome into the show. Excited to talk free agency with you. We actually waited as long as we could to record this episode of the show. At some point, you have to hit record, Mike. You can't just yeah. wait and wait and wait because news is breaking literally we're about to start the show today, and we find out Cole Beasley is released. Yes. Um, so news is going to happen during the show. We've got uh, the trusted uh, Kyle, the Borgogan, and the trusted, the trusted <laughs> and Brooksy as well, untrusted. And they're going to be letting us know if any news breaks. No final destination as of right this second for Deshaun Watson, but we have some finalists and a ton of other free agency news, trade news release player news and uh, the landscape is changing quickly we're gonna have a bunch of teams with new faces yeah i'd said it before we started the nfl's like there's some interesting things happening with like wide receivers ending up with much longer term deals than you would have ever expected but free agency is that time where you have to I mean, you have to overpay that's just part of the process that's what zay jones was counting on Right. All right. I promised it on Tuesday. We have the official Listener League spot to give away. Oh. So thank you to everybody that pre-ordered the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. We actually just updated the Dynasty Pass. We'll have a new mock draft in there soon as well, but mm -hmm. there's a lot happening. Hopefully you're enjoying it. But we promised a winner, and we have a winner. Or do we have a drum roll? We have a drum roll Hit as well. It. Yeah, I was just kind of teasing like, oh, with some pauses, long pauses. I am very excited for you to say this person's name. And here we go. The winner, Milton Sagara. Oh, nicely done. Milton Sagara, you are the winner of the... Listener League spot, you get to play with us this year. Congratulations. We shall be in contact with you. Some of the other Miltons out there with different last names, were on, they were the ones really holding yes. their breath. Yes, Bradley. Milton Bradley? Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> <laughs> How did you not see that coming? <laughs> that was the lowest of the – that fruit wasn't even attached to the tree anymore. It was on the ground. And it really got me. <laughs> it really did. It was blind. I, I said it blindly, then realized it. I feel like one of those guys on uh, Wheel of Fortune lately. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. They're really not... Uh, oh. <laughs> are they not vetting that group enough? <laughs> yeah. Barely the demand for contestants. Not as strong as it used to be. Wow. In the, in the age of Wordle and right. Footle. Yeah, we should be... Which is way better than Wordle. We should be all over that. Congratulations, Milton. We're excited to play with you. You can follow the show, Twitter, at the FF Ballers. 
if you have 10 seconds, which I know we're busy these days, but if you have 10 seconds, we would appreciate it if you left the show a review, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Um, it helps the show, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. We do read those, and we appreciate it. Shall we get this thing started? Oh, I mean, are, are we yes. ready to rumble? Let's go. Free Agent Frenzy. Let's begin with the Deshaun Watson watch because that is dominating headlines and Twitter and uh, the latest news as of this recording. The Browns have been eliminated from contention by Deshaun Watson. Now, one thing that we learned uh, a couple days ago was that for Deshaun Watson to be given permission to meet with these teams, the Texans had to pre-approve a trade package. So what's built into that equation is that if he's meeting with them, there's a deal ready to go. Mm -hmm. So if he chooses to waive his no-trade clause, which is why this is part of the equation, otherwise the Texans would be picking the home. If he chooses to waive that clause to one of these teams, that trade is done. Deshaun Watson will have a new home. If you're handicapping it as of this recording, the Saints seem like they're in the lead. Yes. With the Falcons... Hometown. Seemingly in second place. No final destination for Watson yet, but we know he had a second meeting with the Saints. Yes, and part of the equation of, of trading for Watson, he has a gigantic contract. I mean, for a team to trade for him at this point, I mean, you're – you are going all in. Like you're you're picking up all of the baggage of his unresolved situation. And you had a, a tweet this morning from Andrew Brandt who was saying that the team will take on his thirty five million dollar salary pending a suspension because that like that can change things. If he is suspended for the six games You which don't pay him for that. You then his cap hit goes down to about twenty two and a half million dollars, which that really changes things for uh, the for a team this year, and you're all and you're trading at least three first round picks. At least that was the that's what the rumor mill is saying. That's part of it, and a player. So you are really going one like one thousand percent in on Watson being the future of your franchise. If he lands in New Orleans, which right. again seems probable right now, he will join Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. and Michael Thomas. And, and that's kind of been the pitch. Michael Thomas has led the pitch to come to New Orleans. And so... And Deontay Hardy. Yes. Who, which, Deont if you haven't heard, Deontay... Yeah, and of course, Adam Troutman. My, yeah, well, my boy course, is there, yeah. of course. He'll be part of the trade back uh, to Houston, but go on. Well, yeah, because everybody wants him on this right, team. Yeah. Uh, but Deontay Harris, uh, re he... Made changed some, his name. He made some splashes this year. He changed his name to Hardy to pay homage to his stepfather. If you hadn't heard that news... The, the way that the NFL works is once your name is locked in, to, it's, it's a strange thing, but once your name is locked in for the season, you the NFL will not recognize a name change. But just so that get used to hearing that, it's Deontay Harris is Deontay Hardy. Yeah, they're, so they're, you hear that name, it's not a new player. Right, and he, like, we don't, we don't know yet the final decision of Watson, but just saying, like, Hardy was already a sort of interesting player to me of like the real under the radar type of a player where his, his like, target per route run metrics. I know he's, he's an electric return man, but he was starting to get some more work in the receiving game and his targets per route run and his yards per route run are like outrageously good. And then this would just elevate my uh, talking about him. So if you're, if you're trying to get out in front of the fantasy hitman bump in dynasty, okay. Yes. Yeah, Look, I destroyed Adam Troutman last year. Just well, we again. tried to stop you. Um, Hardy would potentially play that fuller role for, yes. for the franchise. He made a lot of splashes with different quarterbacks last year Yes, on big plays. So, yes, I understand why you're saying he's interesting. And that's, of course, if the Saints don't add Will Fuller as well. Right. But the Saints have maneuvered themselves to somewhere 20-something beneath the cap now. So and the, and the Falcons on the other side have not restructured Matt Ryan, and the reason they haven't restructured him is because not restructuring him is more advantageous to the trade situation. So it makes that will have if if they don't get Watson, 
a restructure will happen and they'll maneuver the cap a little bit in Atlanta, but that hasn't happened yet. Aren't and they in the situation they are in with his cap hit because they kept restructuring him? Uh, yeah, I mean... Like his, his cap hit, <laughs> Matt Ryan's cap hit this year is $48 million. I believe six days ago they had a deal... Oof. Uh, or they're working on the restructuring, but it has not been finalized, and it has to do with the trade. His right now, the cap hit for Matt Ryan is forty eight point six it's six million dollars. That's not manageable. Um, but the new deal would drop his cap number by twelve million to thirty six. So that's what will happen if a trade doesn't happen. So there you go. Are you excited at the prospect of Watson to the Saints, Mike? Uh, fantasy purposes, it it absolutely makes sense. the 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 Atlanta Falcons' entire pitch has to be to to me is just come on home, like you grew up here. And I I understand that appeal the the appeal of going home for almost anybody. It's a did you see the it's picture? It's pretty strong. Did you see the picture of Warwick Dunn? I did not. So uh, when Deshaun Watson was a youth. He's standing there out front, a house with his mother. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Can... And Warwick Dunn gave them yes the it... keys to the house, and he was a young man, you know, it, it, back then an Atlanta uh, native. It was just an interesting picture to show the history of Deshaun Watson. He was also a ball boy for the Falcons. Mm -hmm. So I I totally get that, uh, but that's like that's it. The, I mean, you certainly don't like if you're given the tour. Atlanta's given the tour of the facility, right? Yes. You are skipping the wide receiver room. Yes, You're like, sir. uh, don't worry about that. Let me show you over here. Let me show you the tight end room. No, I don't know because that name has been floated in the trades. Yes, which would be Kyle Pitts. Because I don't know how you possibly trade for a franchise quarterback while trading away like the only offensive weapon you have. I mean, he'd be fading back to pass, and you'd see one of those. Uh, it's Zacchaeus. Oh my gosh, that's it. And then you would have no first round picks to refill your wide receiver room. I. I don't know. Well, it was, it's, I don't know how Atlanta pulls it off. Hey, I can't help but recognize now with Cleveland being eliminated and they were the only finalist in the AFC. So one thing that's happening without question is Watson's coming to the NFC. Brady just unretired. So you talk about the competitive landscape in the AFC and the, the Rams repeating and Aaron Rodgers coming back and Dak Prescott and Kyler and these other quarterbacks. Like It's going to be a gauntlet to get through the NFC this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Saints, like I said, they restructured a ton of players, got to now $29.9 in cap space. It's amazing how they do these every single year. So uh, let's move on. Yes. To sad news. Now, Al is not here this morning. So do we have the drop or do I get to pick the drop? Well, I just want to get it out of the way. I just want it out of the way. Brooks, do you have it? Because I don't want to be surprised by it. hidden. Oh, gotcha. Hold I think it's second. hidden. Okay, well, anyways, the news. The Buffalo Bills signed J.D. McKissick to a two-year, seven million. That was where you're supposed to do it. <laughs> that, that also fits. Because uh, J.D. McKissick is not a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, Washington chose to match, and because you were in that negotiation period where no one could actually sign, he is back with the Washington Manders. J.D. McKissick will reprise his role of the snap and target goblin. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There we go. Smooch is uh, back to Washington. So Antonio Gibson... Uh, R.I.P. Three down back, Antonio Gibson. I mean, but the honest truth is here, Gibson is still close to what he was last year. A lot of his targets and things did come uh, when McKissick was injured. Carson Wentz, not completely a check down type of a of a quarterback. So there, there it should be some real concern for Antonio Gibson getting targets. But he will still be the lead runner, and he'll get a, a whole bunch of attempts. He'll get the goal line work. But that that sliver of hope that you saw of, like, holy crap, it really could happen this year. Gibson could be a true three-down, 
guy end up in the top five, that's probably not happening now. Kyle wanted to know if we're comfortable with Gibson as the as an RB1 for your team in fantasy. I am not. I am not comfortable with Antonio Gibson as my RB1. Beyond the McKissick news, it's also he's been historically injured. And and you you wonder when the team is going to make commitments to take that load away so he stays sure. healthy. I, I would not feel comfortable with him as my one right now. He's I'm I'm fine with him as my RB1 in the situation of the adding the context that he's not my first draft pick. I'm like I'm not taking Gibson in the first round. As much as I love uh, my champion, who is he is a benevolent champion. I don't know if you saw how excited he was on Twitter that McKissick was coming back to the Manders, uh, but it seems that they've yeah, that they bro down over there. But Gibson in the in the first should not happen. If you're talking, I get a high, super high level wide receiver one in the first round, and then in the back of the second, Antonio Gibson comes to me. I'm okay with that as of the right now. Gibson was really, really good at the end of the year. Yes. 1,200-yard pace, eight-and-a-half touchdowns, 53 reception pace. Yeah, that So that probably is not. Yeah, all the 42 is not reception, lost. The 42 receptions, I don't know that he'll hit that mark again, but should be in the low 30s. Yeah, I'm part of that. McKissick was gone for five, five yep. weeks. Um, yeah, that potential, that sweet, sweet potential. All right. And I, look, I wanted to like you, J.D. Right. I wanted to be your friend. I was super pumped for you to go to Buffalo. Was he going to Buffalo, and then he realized, wait, I have a chance to play with Carson Wentz. Yeah. I got to go back. Yes. He's like, Colonel ooh. Mustard with the candlestick. Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills, who have to be a top three odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl? No. I I'm going back to Washington. Can I be honest with you? I didn't think that the Washington Salamanders – we're going to lean this heavy into the mustard color. I feel like they've gone very mustard heavy. I think that's a Wentz choice. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, give me whatever you got that that kind of pulls if, in the, the mustard. If you're talking about the coat, I thought the word was he said he already had that thing. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I'm not joking. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, like, well, he probably stands in front of the mirror pretending he's going into the Hall of Fame like, with that tro with that th with the jacket that he had for the press conference. I believe I saw the report that he he said he already had. Yeah, that. but that bomber jacket's got a lot of mustard in it. The one that they had it him wear does. before, unless it, that's from his high school. It wouldn't be as mustardy if you didn't have the compliment of the ketchup, though. Yeah, you wouldn't feel like you were hot dog yes, sandwich situation. Hot dog in it. Mm. What are we doing? Manders? Two years in. They take two <laughs> years to get a name. And we go, we basically go hot dog. <laughs> the amount of nicknames that we could come up oh, with for yeah. this team. It's going to be a good year. Uh, and they deserve it. It's fun. It's we'll, we'll come up with some new stuff. Hey, guess Who what? Who doesn't love a hot dog? No, hot dogs are great. I mean, vegetarians are probably not in on the yeah, hot dog. Yeah, they're, they're out. Yeah. yeah. Well, they probably make some veggie dogs. Do they, they have, do they have impossible? Good. Do they have impossible dogs? Mm, I don't think so. Because it's impossible to uh -huh. replicate the yeah. deliciousness it's of a hot dog. It's not worth the gap between the impossible <laughs> dog and the real hot dog is too big to overwhelm. <laughs> All right. Any more hot dog commentary? <laughs> Kyle, you got anything for us? They're fine. Okay. This guy. This guy. I'm muting him. Get out of here. <sighs> Number two. Yeah, thank you. All right, the Titans have released veteran wide receiver Julio Jones. Woof. They traded a second and fourth round pick to Atlanta for 31 receptions last year. I think they year. did get a sixth back, though, or something. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> I'm just trying to ease the blow yeah, no, for I mean, our, our friends in Tennessee. I tweeted yesterday the summarized careers of Julio Jones and A.J. Green, who, look, you talk about a mere career. Great careers. Yeah, outstanding. I mean, 13,000 yards plus for Julio, 10,000 plus for A.J. Green. I think A.J. Green has about 170 fewer receptions but eight more touchdowns. But the way that they've mirrored each other has been incredible because they played with their original franchise up until last year, one year with a new team. Not great. Now what? I, I think Julio Jones will find himself another team. It – was a real like as it is with Julio he gets banged up frequently but he ended up missing a lot of time and coach Vrabel of the Titans I mean this he had no time for Julio Jones and his injuries and 
doing the wrong things on the field because he's not getting in the practice. So the 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 waving of Julio Jones com- makes complete sense. I do think he will find a job. Though. What about Atlanta? They need a wide receiver. What's amazing is like the best home right now for like uh, Allen Robinson is probably the Bears, and the best home <laughs> for Julio is probably the Falcons. But that's big news. I mean, he could end up in Arizona. I'm not going to rule that out. I wouldn't rule that out either. Chris Godwin, not going to play on the franchise tag. Three-year, $60 million contract. Nice. Get paid, Godwin. They also signed Russell Gage to a fairly big deal, $20 million guaranteed to come in. And look, they have a an Antonio Brown departure, right? I yes. mean, so you needed another body. And it's not just – I mean, Chris Godwin's coming off of an ACL tear. So – Will he be ready week one? That remains to be seen. But I I think Russell Gage is a good player. He's not a number one. He's a very solid player. He's not a number one wide receiver. And that's not like – That's, that's not an insult. Yes. Like very few players in the NFL are actually number one wide receivers. Look at what he did down the stretch. Like Gage made some really impressive plays. He had some solid production. And I think that this is a very good signing – by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It, if you are a uh, uh, Tyler Johnson truther, not so good. That hurts. Yeah, that hurts. If that ship's sailing. If you are into Scotty Miller, as maybe that that hurts. But the the three pack of Gage Godwin and Mike Evans with Brady. That I mean, that's, and they brought back Perryman, and they brought back Brait. Yeah, yeah. The Cameron Brait re-signing is huge at this point. If Gronk doesn't actually come back. Because O.J. Howard is gone. Yes, he is. Um, so, very interesting. Gage, only 26 years old. You saw the amount of money that Christian Kirk just got, being 25 years old. That's that prime wide receiver age, 25, 26. All right, we have, uh, we've have we got a lot more news to get into. Is anything new broken here, Brooksy? Not yet. Okay. Well, um, why don't we take a quick break and then get back into the news? Austin Hooper, released by the Browns. Things make a little bit more sense. With the Njoku in, deal? Yes, the Njoku deal. Are uh, you interested? They I'm, don't have a lot of pass catchers that, that have um, pedigree right now. I If we're talking about like dynasty, I would be far more interested in Harrison Bryant, who when he – Harrison Bryant's – career I don't think he had the draft capital so I'm just trying to say that you know the career path it reminds me of Dallas Goddard where like when you look at the college production of Harrison Bryant he was great if he had gone to a uh, uh, an NFL franchise that had a true spot for him to be a starting tight end I think Harrison Bryant could have could be on his path to stardom already yeah, just like Goddard was behind Zach Ertz, and now we have we finally have a fresh year of Dallas Goddard being the guy from the beginning. Harrison Bryant, I mean, like, yes, he won the Mackey Award in college, being the best tight end in the country. Unfortunately, he got drafted to be behind a freshly signed Austin Hooper, and David Njoku was still there. So Njoku, he's on the one-year franchise deal. Harrison Bryant, still not even 24 years old. Like, I think he he's is, a good player. He is. A, he is, I. He made I agree. Austin Hooper completely expendable. So he, to me, is the name to watch. Okay. For dynasty and like legit, go look at your waiver wire. Harrison Bryant might be there. It's a good point. The Browns are also going to be stuck with Baker Mayfield. Maybe the news this morning. Oh, is, it, is there more? Okay. Well, because the a lot of news. You know, Baker. Baker by the minute. Yes. But he put his little note out there in case. Uh, to me, it didn't read like a goodbye. It read like a maybe goodbye because the Watson news could have happened and then he's gone. And he wanted to say something. But but why would you say something for just maybe? Well, because it's so public. I mean, it's like the team, regardless of what happens at that point, there is a div- there's a divide between what Baker can be and what the team thinks he is. And so... You know, with them being out of the running, they view him as their quarterback. That was the news this morning. So, Mike Garofalo tweeted. Yes. So I whether he's traded. You, know, you got to read the tweet because the tweet to me, the, the team still views Baker Mayfield as their quarterback going forward. 
They told Mayfield's agents at the Combine that they'd only explore top-tier quarterbacks such as Watson. That is brutal. I don't know if I take it that way. You don't. If, look, look, here's your two options, Mike. You tell him that, or you do it without telling him that. No, no, you. So it's being real with your quarterback. I mean, yes. here, it's, you're a grown-up. Which is ironic because all the quotes coming out, yes. they wanted an adult at quarterback. Look, these are grown men. You haven't played up to being the number one pick in four years, period. You haven't. So if you're going to go and say, hey, look, top tier quarterbacks out there. Like this is like the Aaron Rodgers thing. You know, it's like every every single team should have been in on Aaron Rodgers. Right. It should have been like unless you have the best player that you've made a 10-year commitment to, you should be like, yeah, I'm going to kick the tires there. You're not that good. I'm just saying of using the verbiage, we'll only explore top tier quarterbacks. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. He's not a top tier quarterback. I can agree with that. I still think Baker is good. I think Baker is a starting quarterback. I think Baker is Case Keenum. We had this discussion in yeah, the studio I, yesterday. And I I disagree with him being Keenum. I think Who would you rather have, Baker or Jimmy Garoppolo? Uh probably Baker. Okay, I'd take Jimmy. Okay, and then like Kyle, do you do you have an opinion on that one? Jimmy or Baker? I guess Jimmy. I don't want either. No, I guess Jimmy is the right way to phrase it. <laughs> I guess Jimmy is kind of what they did in camp. They're like, hey, Trey Lance, he doesn't look that good. Who should we start? I guess Jimmy. And that's I, what the free agency is going to be for his new destination. Who should we have as our starting quarterback? I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a starting quarterback. I guess Jimmy. <laughs> um, clearly... Without a big step forward from Baker this year, if he's with the Browns, they're going to move on. Yes. So you're going to enter Marcus Mariota territory, Mitch Trubisky territory, that whole fifth year maybe departure like, into backupville potentially. How I'm trying to remember Baker Mayfield or Matt Ryan, Kyle, since you're a hometown Atlanta boy. Matt Ryan, forty eight million or <laughs> <laughs> thirty six million, Matt Ryan. Give me Matt Ryan. Okay. Was did Mariota play through all five years? No. Okay. No, I don't think he played through all five. So that that will be an interesting. And he's another player getting possible starter buzz as well. The if Baker Mayfield does play through this fifth year and then hit free agency, that will be an interesting thing to watch. It will be one hundred percent based on this next year. Yeah. If he has a year that shows some of that, those characteristics that made him the number one pick. I mean, it's him and Amari Cooper right now. You right. got Donovan Peoples Jones in the tight ends, but uh make or break year for him, no question, if he's still the starter. Mm -hmm. All right. I was listening to a part of our show on Tuesday, and the fantasy prophet, Mike, the fantasy prophet right, <laughs> said <laughs> that they're not done. The Dolphins. Ah, they're not yes. done at running back. Oh, yeah, totally. No one else saw that coming either. Thank no, you. Thank no, you. it's just you. I'm just trying to prop you up. <laughs> oh, thank you. Raheem Mostert, one-year, $3.1 million contract. So this is interesting because on that show we talked about what Chase Edmonds represents, and then you brought up, hey, if they had a banger to take away touchdowns. Right. I don't know if any of us would qualify him as a banger. What I like about the move, Mike McDaniel, familiar with what he brings to that system. Hmm, I want to run a Shanahan system. Why don't I get Shanahan's running back? I th Yeah, I think we had talked about, like, Chase Edmonds can play the Raheem Mostert role for the Miami Dolphins. Now Mostert might and play that role. <laughs> that, that role was, I'm sorry, the role has been filled by Raheem Mostert. He's going to have to play the Edmonds role. Dang so, it. It does get a bit messy for fantasy because they're similar types of players. Uh, Chase it could gonna, be Mostert first and second down, Edmonds third down. I mean, that's what it could be. Yeah, it could be that. It's just that Mostert's coming off an injury. The contract's not huge, but he should be healthy. And if I'm reading Mostert, I'm actually a little bit – I'm a little shocked it was a one-year deal. Like, normally a one-year deal, you're trying to reestablish value and hit the market again. But he'll be 31 after this deal's over. I think he – I think he took what he could get. You are you are that old – you don't have a huge production profile for teams to look back on. You've just flashed here and there. For him at that age, coming off the injury to get a deal that's, I'm guessing, worth up to $3.125 million. I don't know what the guarantee is, but it could be worth that. I think 
Moser took what he could get, which also and, and a real clear path to playing. Yeah, and and this it also puts him with a deal like that into the category of if he's lost it and doesn't have it at camp, he could be cut. I mean, he could not. Yeah, that's, this is not bringing in true. a guaranteed multi year. Um, goal line back to steal from Chase Edmonds, but you're going to need to see this shake out, and we know Mostert can succeed in the offense that Mike McDaniel wants to run. So they also signed Trent Sherfield, which is, again, fulfilling my goals for the Jalen Waddell experience next year. Cedric Wilson, Trent Sherfield, keep it up, Dolphins. The Bills, along with not signing J.D. McKissick, have released Cole Beasley. They tried. Try harder. Stupid. Uh, they signed O.J. Howard to a one-year deal. That is not anything to me. O.J. Howard hasn't been relevant in fantasy for a long time. I'm not really – he'll probably have those games where he catches a touchdown and you go, oh, yeah, O.J. Howard's on the Bills. Yeah, so when I saw the news, one year, $3.5 got to prove it. That's, that's what this is. This is a prove-it deal, which – that's a smart place to go. Go to a, a place where Josh Allen's going to throw for 60,000 yards and a whole bunch of touchdowns. Try and reestablish some value. Where the clear question comes in is, okay, what does this do to Dawson Knox? And if Dawson Knox has a close to similar role as last year, I think the signing of O.J. Howard is actually a big deal. Because if O.J. Howard comes in and catches just three to four touchdowns, that's three to four opportunities that Dawson Knox did not come through. Where Dawson Knox, his he did his, not have a high reception total. His fantasy value was completely on touchdowns. And if he's the if Dawson Knox is the dude playing with Josh Allen, I think he can replicate something close to what he did last year. But now, if you have another real capable tight end who could be a monster in the end zone, I'm just, like I'm. It's not a death blow to Dawson Knox, but this is now a Another red flag for Dawson Knox, who could go. He he could be one of those, you know, tight ends taken in the sixth to eighth round range. And when you have the red flags of last year, very low reception total, high touchdowns, with another big player, I, I think, don't think OJ Howard is that much of a threat. Okay, he spent his career not being a threat. I mean, that's the truth. Even with Tom Brady, even with um, pass heavy offenses, he's still not been a threat. So they're going to have to add somebody. I think you can also narrative it the other direction and say, look, Cole Beasley's gone. Emmanuel Sanders is gone. Like Dawson Knox is young and upcoming. Sure. And a primary target for him. And he missed some time, right? Like he missed some games due to injury. So his, uh, his reception total was not going to be as high. So I that's just my take. Yeah. It, like I said, I'm, this isn't completely writing off Dawson Knox. It's just a... When you look at someone who had 49 receptions, 587 yards, yeah, but nine touchdowns, I, I, for sure. It's I mean it's the Robert Tunyon question of that would let me pull up Robert Tunyon's stat. No, line. I remember it was very it was like 57 in, in nine or ten. Yeah, so two years ago Robert Tunyon was 52 for 586 and 11, very very similar to what Dawson Knox did. So if the reception totals don't go up and you just take away two touchdowns from what Knox did last year. Oh, I get it. Then that's a that's a devastating proposition for uh just any any sort of consistency for tight end production. And people want to talk about um you know with Beasley and Sanders not being there, they want to talk about that breakout game from Gabe Davis. Yeah. Um I am am still resistant. I will go on record here if you're ready. Okay. I guarantee a first or second round wide receiver draft pick from the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put that on the record. I think they're going to be the big splash of wide receiver. So when they don't, then what then happens? Then I will be wrong. <laughs> I'm putting it all on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, if they don't do it, I will in fact no, be he, wrong. Here's what I'm putting on the line. <laughs> if they don't do it, then get, then I then I can be interested in Gabe Davis. There you go. I mean, I'm not interested in him. To the degree that the the rest of humanity wants to be, I know that was an impressive game, but I think they're adding more pieces. Uh, I so I tend to side with you that they will spend a first or second day pick, twenty fifth overall, a first, wide receiver, lock it in. This ain't no Jason Moore guarantee. <laughs> you know how Jason Moore guarantees go? Yeah, they. It's a hundred percent death knell for it, what he's saying. It's a guarantee. 
Yeah. A Jason Moore guarantee is a 100% lock just for the opposite thing yeah, that he is guaranteed will happen. That's right. That's right. But, yeah, I, I agree. You're still on draft watch, but you're at the time in Dynasty where you have to try and call your shot because if they don't, if the Andy Holloway guarantee falls through <laughs> and they don't spend a first or a second day draft pick on a wide receiver then the path is the wide receiver yeah. two on that team is gabe davis <laughs> it's, and it's, it's absolutely right and then the ceiling goes just into the atmosphere yeah it does um which the the stratosphere is that's above the atmosphere uh i th well, see that's, that's a tough that's a, good that's a tough one right because that's a common phrase into yeah. the stratosphere yeah which is the atmosphere as it, oh gosh now see this is not an area i would guarantee yeah, this is. I'm really. I believe the stratosphere. Kyle must know this. He went I, to school. I no one knows this. this <laughs> no one knows this. Okay. Well, well, stratosphere. Mike, if you could just find that out for me. Stratosphere versus atmosphere coming up. What if they're the same? The stratosphere is a layer mm -hmm. of the Earth's atmosphere. There you go. So it's a subcategory. The the, that's what I think. The atmosphere is the whole thing. Oh, and then it's broken down into like yes. stratosphere. Yeah, and what's is, the other one called? Uh, we got the troposphere, okay. which is the lowest layer. No one ever says that. All the way to the troposphere. Yeah, because that's not aiming high. Why do you want that's the lower than the stratosphere? Yeah. Oh, okay. It stratosphere is the second layer. Well, what's the highest? Uh, the next layer above the stratosphere is the mesosphere. Well, no one said that's where you should be aiming. Yes. If they don't draft a first round pick, they where where is he going? Gabe Davis is going to the, the well okay. the, to the met metric. <laughs> The, the mesosphere, Thank or mes I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, the stratosphere, it's also the highest part of the atmosphere that jet planes can reach. Okay. Well, that makes sense now. Um, glad we cleared that up. Welcome to the sciencey science. Oh, ballers. yeah. We got <laughs> no guarantees on that. The Giants signed Ricky Seals Jones. Okay. Oh, I didn't mention the Bills signed Von Miller to way too much money. Yes. If what, you think Von it, Miller has six years left of production, you are crazy. That's got to be a deal that's uh, slightly more conducive for them to cut him after two or three years. Yeah, it, it's the numbers of the six-year, one hundred and twenty million dollars. That's that's headline an, makers. That's an agent putting that stuff out. I think the guarantee was closer to sixty. All uh, right. So it like he's making a lot of money for for a edge rusher at his age, but he is an absolute impact player. Who's older, Von Miller or Chandler Jones? Because Chandler Jones uh, just signed a big deal, too, with the Raiders. So Von Miller is about to turn 33 okay. years old. I, so and Chandler Jones is 32. Okay. So uh, both of them still contributors just on the back part of their career. Uh, more tight ends getting signed. Tyler Conklin to the Jets. They also had signed C.J. Uzama. Yeah, well, I so don't know. that's their two starting tight ends. I don't know what they're doing. Tyrod Taylor will be the backup for the Giants, which means he could be the starter for the Giants at some point. Yes, it does. Daria Gumbawale, Royce Freeman, big additions for the Texans. I I like it, though. I like it in terms of process of the Houston Texans realizing what the what the short-term future of the team is. And you go you just bring in you bring in guys who can play. But don't you want Davis Mills to be something? I I don't know if he can be or not. Like he's, I like him. He's he's shown some things, absolutely. But Davis Mills, greater sign, Baker Mayfield. What? What are you doing? Put it on the board. What are you doing? <laughs> I do I like I'd rather go into the season with Davis Mills. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, there you go. I mean that's that's uh that's a quite the hot take. Uh I would so with these with these guys coming in. I would still presume that Rex Burkhead is at the top of the depth chart. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, Texans fans. I'm so sorry that this is your existence. Yeah. It You're does. listening to us talk about all these big names being added to different teams, and we have to focus on Royce Freeman and Daria Gumbawale. And Rex Burkhead at the top of your list. It, it is the aisle of like running backs that what could have been. Yeah. Yeah. It's the what that team did the same thing last year. They just kept adding has-beens. James White, two-year, $5 million contract with the Patriots. We brought this up early in the offseason. This is one of those things where the running back room, Damian Harris was very good, scored a lot of touchdowns. You have uh, Ramondre, 
But James White was not there. Right. And uh, Brandon Bolden is gone, and he filled in in that third down role a lot, and now yeah. James White will come and do that. But it's still a little bit unsettling to me to have so many – like all three of those guys are con going to contribute. That's the reality is all three players will be contributing, and it will be a little hard to know who's going to be the best. Yep, it will. Panthers signed Deonta Foreman. One-year, $2 million contract. This is a backup job. This yep. is a Chuba can't do it. Yeah, Chuba, I mean, <laughs> Chuba had plenty of time to prove to this team that he should, in fact, be the backup running back. Did not. But, and while Deonta Foreman had his shot to be a backup running back and played extremely well. So happy for him to get that money. The There was a little bit of an update on the Watson's status which is just that the Panthers are all but eliminated it would take a Hail Mary from them okay to salvage the situation the the Saints are the clear front runner the Falcons are still in contention and what's interesting is just having the divisional battle like this is such a such a high implication transaction for the future like if you think your division mate might be getting Deshaun Watson you owe it yes. to yourself to get into the deal so Seems like the Saints. Uh yeah, it it definitely feels like that. Again, I just I don't I don't see a way that the Falcons can give up what the Houston Texans want in draft capital and potentially a starter and then have a, an offense left to field for a quarterback of uh, any quarterback to really have a true chance in that division. So, yeah, cuz right now they just it's hard to look at that offense and say that they can threaten anybody. And we've seen Deshaun Watson with no offensive pieces, by the way. It wasn't good. He won four games. Oh, and we do have – so uh, Rappaport, he's right now – just like, and I've, I've seen this as a couple other places too, but, but Ian Rappaport currently <clears> – <throat> excuse me, currently on the, the McAfee show saying he does believe Matt Ryan to the Colts is a real possibility. I mean, if I, a trade I, happens, I assume. I think that if if Watson goes to Atlanta, I think that's a guarantee. An interesting note. Well, that's a, it's a way to salvage, right? Because if, if yeah. Watson goes there and you still have Ryan. An interesting note for the Houston Texans that I I saw yesterday when they were exploring all these uh, other trades. This is and this is for your Davis Mills love. When they were exploring the trades earlier with Watson, they were saying they don't want the quarterback back like they don't value those guys over what they already have in davis mills yeah, third, i mean mills was a third round pick that's not too bad in terms of, of that's, potential it's the ultimate rookie quarterback contract i would not want to bring in in a has-been to you just talked about the, the yeah. texans future why well, bring a has-been in you're gonna suck 100 percent. you so, go you see if davis mills is the guy you don't bring Darnold back over. You don't bring Jamison. You you run with the rookie and see if maybe you actually actually hit a gold mine in the third round. Now, uh, Kyle, being the Atlanta man that you are, are you actively like passionately rooting for this Watson deal? I have such mixed feelings of yeah Ryan and Watson situation. Yeah, mixed feelings as in loyalty to Matt Ryan. Loyalty, but also just Watson brings more than just football. There's just the baggage. Worst. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of gross stuff. Yeah, I mean that. Not saying that this is what should always happen, but it seems kind of. It seems like whatever team the the interest is because this situation with Watson, even civilly, is going to pale in comparison time wise to the his, the history of the career. Assuming no further problems. But, right. like, I mean, you're going to go through the suspension. You're going to go through some headlines. You're going to go through some negative. But I'm just being a realist here and saying he's 26. So years 27 through 34, 35 are probably going to be what they're looking at. Casey Hayward did sign a two-year contract with the Falcons. Congrats, so Kyle. you get veteran cornerback Casey Hayward. He is – Casey Hayward is always looking for a different city to be – Injured in, unfortunately. And I love him. He's a great player. Yes. He's had some really bad luck throughout his career. All right, if we don't have any other news, I'll just remind you, ultimatedraftkid.com, you want to jump in, get that Dynasty Pass update that's uh, sitting there. We'll be doing a new mock draft soon. 
Lots happening, Mike. Oh, goodness gracious. And that Jason guy is going to float on back to Arizona. He's swimming. Yeah. So. We'll be back. That is it. We'll be back with you soon. Enjoy all the tweets and updates. and Enjoy tonight's face festivities, but stay safe, everybody. Be responsible. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>